Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to episode 13 of my Umineko Let's Play. In the last episode, we had a pretty tragic moment with, uh, you know, Canon and Jessica, where Canon seems to be kind of hesitating uh, on believing that he was incapable of, like, feeling love or things like that. And he had a sweet moment with Jessica uh, when she invited him to the school festival. But uh, he uh, rejected her and rejected feelings and relationships and, and, you know, insisting that he is furniture and all that stuff. And Beatrice revealed that the reason that she granted um, Shannon the favor to uh, get her and George together is because she knows that eventually the relationship's going to fall apart and she takes pleasure in that. And that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to continue on and uh, see what happens. But anyway, we're going to continue on and uh, see what happens next. I'm still waiting on that uh, that family meeting. I'm like, come on, what's it going to happen? Uh, let's let's get some murders going here. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's get back into it. Let's see what happens next. えっと、そ、それってどういう意味ですか、ジョージさん。言葉通りの意味だよ。僕はまだ自分の城を築き上げてないそれができて初めて僕は一人前になれたと思えるんだ。Also, uh, I was going on about like, oh, they're so cute together, the relationship is so cute. Um, and then people pointed out their ages, and I forgot about that. That uh, she is like, uh, at least when we uh, encounter them during the the meeting, I assume this is a little while ago. Uh, that she's like 16 and he's 23, and then it's a little bit ickier. <laughs> and then I'm like, ugh, uh, maybe, maybe the relationship shouldn't last for other reasons. But then it, but then it's like, ah, but he's a gentleman. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, go after girls your own age. It almost seems like you're taking on a child bride. Uh, I have feelings. I have conflicting feelings about this. <sighs> それはその、えっと。Okay, so in this one, uh, he's talking about this pretty early. Maybe he mentioned it before, and maybe she rebuffed him and was like, Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe like the thoughts she had about Ava saying, like, you're just going to drag George down. Uh, you're not good enough for him. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so maybe the story is changing a little bit differently where he's talking about the engagement ring early because in the first chapter, uh, he gave their, he gave her the ring like the night before she died at the family meeting. But I, I'm 16. <laughs> no, I was here for, I'm, instead of furniture, I'm for furniture, she's like, I'm 15. そうだったね。じゃあ、家具は人の言うことを聞かないとね。Yeah, that way, in that regard, like I know he's doing it to help her out, but it's just like it just kind of sounds like he's bullying her into it. 今君に送るのにふさわしい指輪を作らせてる。多分今度の親族会議の日には持っていけると思う。Oh, family conference. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, come on. Let's have it. Let's let it happen already. その時に送るからどうか。君の返事を聞かせてほしいんだ。Okay, so they did talk about it beforehand. 君が僕の婚約を受けてくれたら、僕はその席でおじいさまを含めたすべての親族の前で君との婚約を宣言する。Well, maybe in that case. So, uh, I did a um, theory video about how I didn't know if Shannon actually died. Uh, maybe it was like a ruse. Or maybe it was one of the servants, if she did die, if it was one of the servants who killed her. But if this is the case, and if Ava found out about this, I wouldn't put past Ava to kill Shannon. Uh, to, you know, be like, I gotta protect my baby boy, he's making a huge mistake, I gotta kill Shannon. Because, like, I'm doing this, I'm being a good mother, and I'm doing this for his sake, he's gonna be upset. But he'll thank me later, so maybe she had something to do with it. Whether Hideyoshi was in on it too, because it was pretty sus, you know, the first chapter when they just happened to like just not be there when all that stuff went down. But this story, it could be happening a little bit differently, and I hope it does. Jo, Jojisa. Kimi to boku no naka o 
ふさわしくないと咎める人たちはきっといる That's an understatement. でもそいつらの顔を見る必要はない君はその瞳の中に僕だけを満たしていればいいから君を必ず幸せにするそれだけは絶対に約束するから、oh, If only she was a little bit older this would be so cute and perfect They're like oh they're so sweet Ooh, the butterflies, what's going on here? Oh, どのように緑のか楽しみでならない。売れにすぎて鎖落ちる果実の駅に黄金の蝶たちは舞い降りぬ。今より収穫の日がまちどし。宴の時はまだかまだか。It's funny how I was saying Beatrice. Beatrice is a little messed up for her to delight in like the uh suffering and the sadness of others and yet I'm like kind of like oh man I can't wait for the family conference and I can't I'm excited to see what happens knowing people are going to die and it's going to be horrible oh here we go here we go here we go yes 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 Oh, yes, so excited. Yes. So, oh, man, if I just, I should have just left, if I had known that I was so close to the end of that, like, particular part of the chapter, I could have just had that last part in, but eh, it's okay. They had eaten breakfast at a coffee shop in the station building. By chance, the inside of the shop had been decorated with Halloween color since it was October. It seemed that Maria had really taken a liking to that. Yay, we're getting to see the old characters again. Ever since, she had been making a fuss inside the train about wanting to have a Halloween festival without caring that she was attracting the attention of others. Oh, so we're gonna see. Yeah, this was uh, her and... Um, and, oh my gosh, Rosa. Her and Rosa were running late, I think they said, because of the train, so we get to see their point of view here. Halloween is popular in Europe and America, but people are hardly familiar with it at all in Japan. The shopping district was colorfully decorated with orange pumpkins, but the costume parades of children demanding sweets and saying trick or treat were nowhere in sight. <laughs> of course, Mari would be into Halloween. Of course, she would be. Halloween <laughs> While it wasn't completely full inside the train, there were enough people here that almost all the seats were occupied. Among them, Mari was making a fuss, kicking her feet back and forth in her seat, while Rosa scowled at her. Oh, man, if I was in that train, I'd be pretty pissed at Mari. I'd be like, oh my god, this, this kid. Rosa told her many times in a low voice to stop, but Mari was taking no notice whatsoever. Once Maria gets this way, no matter how much you try to explain the situation or calm her, she doesn't listen. In the past, Rosa used to pamper Mari and give in to her at times like this, but that had probably been the problem. Almost certainly, the young Maria had formed the wrong impression that if she kept co uh, complaining noisily, her mother would give in and listen to her. That error had brought to Rosa's attention through an educational book, and since then, she had hardened her heart so as not to pamper her beloved daughter. But Rosa could manage less and less mutual understanding with Maria, and it had become more and more common that she felt discouraged by her own powerlessness. <laughs> when we get back to this regular Maria, like when she's having tantrum, I'm like, eh, maybe I didn't miss her very much, but then when she goes into creepy Maria, then I'm like, yes. As Maria kicked her feet, a stout old woman sitting in the seat across from Maria picked a candy out of her handbag and gave it to her. And this is the problem. This is like with strangers and like her, um, and like Hideyoshi and stuff. Like all like, oh, you know, she's so cute and pampering and giving her a treat. So they're kind of like enabling it a little bit. But they don't know the true depths of like, you know, 
there's more to Mario than they think. It's, you know. Ooh. And then the nice music stops. <laughs> there may not have been any malice in those words from the old woman, but it seemed that Rosa had taken that in an extremely humiliating way. Maria! Oh, this is an awkward situation. The poor old lady, she was just trying to be nice. Oh, and there's that creepy sound effects in the back. I don't know if this is the same sound effects going on when uh, Rosa hit her, but I'm expecting a smack or something soon. But she wouldn't do that in public, I don't think, because she's like, I have to put on a good appearance. Oh? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Rosa reflectively hit Maria violently on her cheek. In a flash, Maria started crying loudly. Rosa immediately snatched the candy from Maria's hand and stuck it out towards the dumbfounded old woman sitting next to them. Oh. Poor lady! Oh. Breathing heavily, Rosa once again held the candy out to the old woman. The woman looked confused for a moment about what she should say but then understood that perhaps her actions may have caused trouble for this parent and child. She accepted the candy back, apologizing. Then Rosa finally took notice of her surroundings. Yeah, she lost control, and she's like, ah, shit. Her daughter's clothes were all messed up. She was crying and shouting with her nose dripping, and there were many dumbfounded passengers watching them. Because Rose is all about, like, keeping that outer appearance of, like, we're good citizens, we're calm, we're dressed nicely, and then she just, like, all that is gone now. Except for the sound of the train running, the rail car was completely silent. Fortunately, that pitiful silence didn't last more than a short while. However, in its place came an even more painful atmosphere as everyone whispered. Maria shouted, cried, kicked, and stomped her feet as usual, paying no heed to the people sitting around her. Impulsively, Rosa tried to slap her again. Like, this is such a shitty situation. I know Rosa has, like, people have said that she may, uh, she most likely is autistic. So she can't help it. And then, like, Rosa, like, she doesn't understand, uh, what is wrong with Maria or, like, why Maria is this way. But, like I said, she's got the money. She should probably, like, has she not taken her to, like, you know, go and maybe see, like, hey, maybe get her checked out by a doctor, behavioral specialist, something, instead of smacking her around all the time. Ugh. Impulsively, Rosa tried to slap her again, but she noticed the cold eyes of the people in the train and couldn't do that anymore. When the train stopped, Rosa got off, forcibly pulling Maria by the arm and almost dragging her along the ground. Man, this got real dark, real fast. As usual, Maria didn't stop crying. Rosa took her to the end of the platform and hit her cheek again. At that moment she was hit, Maria stopped crying for an instant, but before long she shouted and cried even more than before. Rosa, whose emotions had exploded, grabbed Maria by her collar and pulled her hair as if to rip it out. Damn, Rosa! Oh, I wonder if Rosa's gonna have like a dark moment where she's holding her, because she's like near the train tracks, be like, if I just fucking push her off, then it's like, I don't have to deal with her anymore. Oh man, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, in one of these loops or whatever these these are, these chapters, that she's the one who kills Maria. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, Rosa just loses her mind. <laughs> oh god, Rosa's so much worse in this one than she was in the first chapter. <laughs> Oh, 
<笑>なんであんたはいつまでも頭の中が幼稚園なのよどうしてママの言うことが聞けないのどうしてどうして Along with those severe words, Rosa hit Mario's head over and over again. The more Mario cried and shouted, the more Rosa hit her. Rosa needs to go to, like, a psychologist. She needs to, like, she needs to get her anger under control. She needs to learn how to deal with this a little bit better. The more Mario was hit, the more intensely she cried and shouted. I get it, this is the 80s. Times were different back then, but still. Ah, it's frustrating to me to watch this and be like, Rosa, do better. Okay. No, oh, it's just as says she's like, save me from her. Like, she's. Rose is the one inflicting the pain, and yet Mari's like, save me, save me from yourself. <laughs> The one who timidly called to her was the station attendant. Rosa glared at him with a look that said, Don't cut into the problems of a mother and child stranger. The station attendant surely hadn't wanted to talk to her. However, Rosa had been yelling on the platform for a much longer time than she had imagined. Her emotional scolding had caused the passengers on the platform to advise the station attendant that it would be a good idea to speak to her. Rosa yelled at the station attendant they would get on the next train and not to bother them anymore. And then finally, or maybe we should say for the second time, she noticed the passengers on the platform staring at her from the distance. Rosa sweated slightly. She felt the wind chill the sweat, tormenting her. Mari was still crying, shielding her own head. No, unless this beating stopped, she would probably keep crying forever. And then she goes like the abusive loop, right? And then she's going to apologize to Maria. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. As Rosa recovered from the evil heat inside her head, she knew she had surrendered her soul to something bad again. Rosa fell to her knees and hugged Maria, whose face was soggy with tears and mucus. Yep, there it is. And then Rosa's like, uh, she's car- um... She's, uh, it, the way she described it is, like, she doesn't want to believe that's herself doing that. She's like, something bad in her, like, took over. Like, it's- she's distancing herself from her own actions. Oh, this is just such a sad, frustrating thing to, to watch. Oh, and then, like, Maria's saying that too. She's like, that wasn't my mom. That was, like, a demon inside my mom. My mom wouldn't do that to me. Finally, Maria realized that her mother had turned back to being her mother. Then she clung to her mother's body and cried, burying her face in her mother's chest. <laughs> No, Maria. Yeah, oh, saying she's a witch. No. And Rose is going along with it. I guess that would be easier than saying, like, no, I just am, uh, I'm just emotionally and physically abusive to you. It's like, no, it was a witch. It was a witch. <laughs> for a long time, the two of them hugged each other, asking for forgiveness and sending words of forgiveness back. What a fucked up relationship that is. After a while, the two of them gradually calmed down and naturally drew their faces apart. Mari's face, Rose's face, both were deep red after crying their eyes out. Maria, I want to go to Halloween. Oh, 
調子お兄ちゃんやジェシカお姉ちゃんにかぼちゃマシュマロ見せてあげたかった That was a suite which had been alongside the cash register at the shop where they'd eaten breakfast. It was a fancy suite that had a big orange marshmallow in the shape of a jack o' lantern stuck to the end of the stick. Mari had wanted that and had insistently pestered for it. Rosa had disallowed it, saying there was no way she'd buy such a suite right after they'd had breakfast. Maria, And now it's like, and there's the cycle again, where it's like, I'm going to buy your forgiveness, I'm going to get you something nice, so that you forget what I just did to you. The truth was that they had had no time to waste loitering around a stopover station. Oh, is that the reason that they were late? It was just like, hey, I'm, I abused my daughter and I had to go and buy her forgiveness, so that's why we were late. If they missed the airplane, they would fall half a day behind schedule. She should have left home with more time to spare, but she ended up leaving late after spending too long choosing Maria's clothes. Because of that, Rosa had been a bit impatient since this morning. She looked at the clock. They should be getting on the next train immediately. But her daughter had firmly joined hands with her to go buy the suite together, and that hand was warm. To Rosa right now, it was more important to regrow her bonds with Maria. Maria was not only Rosa's beloved daughter, she was everything Rosa had. Like, what a complicated relationship. It's like, she loves her, but she hates her at the same time. Fortunately, she could see that there was a big supermarket right in front of the station. Maybe she wouldn't be able to find a suite exactly like that one, but Maria would probably accept something similar. Besides, Rosa also couldn't show up with a face swelled from crying. She'd have to fix her makeup. <laughs> Oh, but then, like, Maria is so sweet and cute. <laughs> but then she could also be really annoying. And also really scary. The two left the turnstiles of the, ta of the station in this unknown town. Maria walked along the pedestrian cross... Maria walked across the pedestrian crossing together with her mother, feeling very pleased, as though she were walking in an amusement park. Both faces were still deep red. But warmth could be seen between the two of them, mother and child, as they smiled at each other awkwardly. Here it is! Here it is! Hopefully, soon. Anata, konna tokoro de dou sareta no desu ka? Kimiko, nan demo noi. 考え事をするのにここが少し心地よかっただけだ今日の準備は全て手配が終わっていますあとはお茶でも飲みながらくつろいで待とうではありませんかすまん君にいつも面倒なことを全て押し付けているどうか私をもっと頼ってはいただけませんか私はあなたの妻です無論君にはいつも助けられているし感謝もしているだからこそ、私は私の仕事に専念できる。わかっています。お仕事のこと、そして、お父様の遺産の話、ですね。君には関係のないことだ。欲深な兄弟たちの不肉のあさり合いに過ぎ。大丈夫です。あなすべてうまくいきます。Oh. Well, look at them. They actually have nice moments together. あなたのお仕事がうまくいかなかったことはありません。He see, he was so dismissive of her in the first, uh, you know, the first episode. Like, not just in front of the family, but when he was showing her the gold. But, like, in a weird way, and kind of like a. They seem, like, very formal, but they do seem to care about each other. Not so he softly cuddled close to Krauss's shoulder. She spoke words to reward Krauss for the difficulties of his work, but not so he herself. Oh, but Natsui was herself the one who knew best that it wasn't going well. Krauss's enterprises were something like a seesaw where large amounts of money swung. A big investment leads to a large return, but the swaying of a large-scale seesaw is large yet sluggish and not something which shows immediate results. At times he would make more investment so that the seesaw inclined faster towards the good side. Naturally, he did that because he had the confidence that, in a not-so-distant future, he'd be able to recover all the investments made. 
However, the seesaws Krauss chose never turned out as he would have liked them to. His foresight wasn't wrong, but times were slow. They never caught up with him. For example, think of a literal seesaw placed in a park. Due to its great popularity, there was always someone waiting, uh, playing on it, so if he wanted to play, he would have to wait a long time for his turn. And then one day he found that seesaw vacant, straddled it, realizing he was the first to arrive and had it all to himself. However, nobody got on the opposite side of the seesaw, so he couldn't play on it. And no matter how much time passed, nobody came to the opposite side of the seesaw. The seesaw is a popular piece of playground equipment, so if you waited, another person would definitely show up. Krauss noticed. The weather looked like it was getting worse. That's why nobody was coming outside to play. But the seesaw is a popular piece of playground equipment, so someone would definitely come. If he vacated his place because the weather seemed to be getting worse, someone would definitely snatch his place away, and he would end up only longingly gazing from a distance at someone else having fun playing on the seesaw again. On one side of the seesaw, he continued to wait patiently, all alone. That was Krauss's current enterprise and situation. え、自分so you can tell he trusts Natsui because uh, you could see in that first chapter when he was so like confident and he was playing his siblings so hard. But here he's showing his insecurities and his doubts. <laughs> Only Natsui knew. She knew of Krauss's anguish. As the eldest son of the Ushiromiya family who would have had to who would have to shoulder a big responsibility, he couldn't open his pained heart to anyone and would always be compared to his father's great enterprises. あなたが親父殿の件は That was interesting, the way she's like, I've made the preparations, all of them. What does that mean? That sounded very foreboding. Been a while since I've seen you, Mr. Sneaky Dude. Ingredients of varied colors had been gathered in the kitchen, and the preliminary arrangements had already been started. Even though it was still morning, the ingredients for dinner were already in saucepans and steaming. Normally, he had to deal with several assorted matters other than cooking, but on the day of the family conference, he could devote himself to it entirely. To Goda, who was originally a chef, this was surely the greatest gala occasion of the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> It was rare for Goda to be in this good of a mood towards his fellow servants. To Goda, who boasted about being a chef who worked exclusively for the Ushiromiya family, being given the right to show off his cooking at the family conference was the greatest honor. また油を売っているのか。いや、結構だ。では引き続きよろしく頼む。ええ、バンジー、この豪太にお任せを。ケンジー placed the telephone back on the receiver, sighing lightly. 
thinking of Kumasawa, who was no doubt hiding and slacking off even though things were this busy, and the ostentatious Goda, who only felt like doing anything on a day where he could show off, Genji sighed once again. Oops. お嬢様より。お子様方が泊まれるよう、4人分の用意をするようにとのご指示を賜りましたが、いか。ウッス。今年は6年ぶりにバトラ様がお見えになるそうだ。お嬢様もいとこ4人で夜更かしをされたいの
<laughs> it is funny seeing him like this. He's normally so, like, composed. <laughs> As he crossed his arms moaning and groaning, someone knocked on the door. George was startled back to reality. Oh, George-kun. <laughs> or maybe Rudolph overheard and said something to Ava like, uh, is he talking about Shannon, the servant? <laughs> Rudolph washed his hands, laughed cheerfully, and left. George knew that the most embarrassing part hadn't been overheard, and he patted his chest in relief. Well, you hope so. ローザはまだ来ないのか。まだよ。遅いわね。天候調整中だからいいようなものを。これで普段通りのダイヤだったらあいつ。乗り遅れちまうぜ。そしたらどうする気なんだあいつ。ローザさんだっていい年の大人よ
The adults thought that method wasn't good, but surprisingly, Maria looked pleased, her face splitting into a wide grin. Yeah, it's funny because George wasn't there to introduce them and be like, he's a cousin like I'm, like like me, because he's in the bathroom practicing his speech to Shannon. <laughs> From inside her handbag, Maria picked up a jack-o'-lantern suite identical to the one she had in her hand, presented it to Battler. It seemed that Battler accepting it was enough to confirm their friendship. The adults felt admiration at how children have their own ways of communicating. To Maria, who had been complaining that she wanted to have a Halloween festival, it must have felt like Battler was a friend since he knew about Trick or Treat. Her defensive posture from before was completely gone. Now she was all merry as though they had been friends for decades. A witch, you know she's gonna say a witch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, and then it's gonna stop and everyone's gonna be like, what? おや、お嬢様、こんなところにお奥様が探しておいでで<笑> ほう。それはまたどうしてでございましょう。親族会議ってのは爺様に連なる全ての一族老党が集まる日だ。今年は6年ぶりにバトラも来るそうじゃねえか。そんな感じでさ、何十年かぶりに今までずっと姿を現さ
もう一人の主人であられるということだけでございますじいさまの受け売りかよ給料もらってるとはいえじいさまの盲言に付き合うのも大変だなただこれだけは申し上げられます何六軒島は太古の昔小豆島と呼ばれて恐れられてきました小豆は悪敵がなまったものと言われ本当は悪敵島と呼ばれていたのだと漁民たちの間では伝えられておりました前にも聞いたよこの辺は暗礁が多くて海難事故が多かったから漁民たちが恐れてむやみに近づかなかったって話だろ悪敵島には悪霊が住み着いていて太古の昔から人々の魂を食らい続けてきましたこの島に関わり命を奪われた人間はあまりにも多いのですそれを旅の修験者だかなんだかが例の社を作って鎮魂したんで収まったってんじゃなかったっけうさんくせえ話だぜその鎮魂の社はこの夏暗き闇を引き裂く紫色の不気味な雷で打ち砕かれたとか。Violet Thunderbolt and what is the color that we see in this in the other realm when you see the witches? It's purple, right? I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Kumasawa san, so no hana shi ski da na. Doskani, chinkon no yashiro ga lakurai de nakunat chimo non te bu kimi da ga. Ma, moto moto onboro da ta shi na. Maybe that was Beatrice getting her power back a little bit and caused the thunderbolt, and then, you know, that was the same place where Shannon broke the mirror. Kumasawa kept silent for a moment there. Jessica, who wanted her to keep going, found that silence very eerie. Once Kumasawa was satisfied she had spooked Jessica just the right amount, she grinned broadly. Hate, sate, donna koto ni naru yara. Ha 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 でしょうたまには優雅な時間を得てあなたの心を豊かにするのもあなたの仕事に役に立つんじゃないかしらだな心と財布は豊かじゃなきゃいけねえ分かったよその日は開けておくことにする予約を頼むぜ分かったわ絶対よああよろしく頼む愛してるぜキリああ we get to see I think their relationship's pretty cute too Like, they're kind of the opposite of, like, Natsui and、uh, Krauss, where they're very formal with each other. These two are, like, very,、uh, I don't know, like, very playful, and I find it adorable. Even if、uh, he's a little crass sometimes. <laughs> After kissing the receiver, Rudolph hung up. In front of his seat, there were many executives with their sleeves rolled up, eagerly awaiting the end of the phone. I love he looks like a gangster, and he's, like, kissing the receiver in front of all of his, like, Workers and he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Love it. Mata se taze. America kara len laku a kitaka. Hi. Gai san ni Dale Watanabe Bengosh kara des. Otsnagi shimas. Kek kyok no tokoro. Kan shok wa dou nanda. Yeah, there's this whole situation where he has to, like, there's a lawsuit going on in America. I'm like, what's, let's see what this is about. Sore ga sono. Hitos kambashik nai yo deste. Senpo wa saiban o moji sanai tsumori no yo des. Yap pari goma ka shi kire nai ka na. <laughs> the executive ordered the secretarial office to connect him to the external line. Immediately, the telephone in front of Rudolph started ringing. Hello, President Ushiromiya. いいニュースと悪いニュースがありますがどちらを先にしますか悪いニュースが先がいいな
デザートがないと頑張れないたちなんだわかりました悪いニュースは先方が当方を告発する準備に入ったということですつい先日類似した裁判で原告が圧勝する判決が出されました被告側も当方が主張するのとほぼ同じ内容で論戦していたのですが全てにおいて却下されました残念ながらこのまま法廷に臨めば当方の主張はことごとく却下される可能性が極めて高いでしょう例の裁判全滅だったかうちより有利な条件だったと思ってたんだがそりゃつらいなでいいニュースは先方の幹部と接触できました先方に当方の立ち位置を説明し先方のブランドイメージを侵害する意図がないことを説明し理解を得ることができました先方は近日中に条件提示を行いそれらの履行が行われるなら告発を見送ると約束しました取締役会のナンバー2による発言です官職は正直非常に厳しいものになると予想されます当方の想定では避けられないものとして社名変更交渉の余地のあるものとして和解金額大手新聞への謝罪広告掲載それらの履行期間と見ていますうちに潰れろと一言言いやいいのに周りくどいやつらだぜ先方は近年2代目社長に交代したばかりでまだ足固めが終わっていません当方が徹底抗戦した場合現社長に失点を与えたい勢力が何らかの利的工作をしかねないと懸念していますそのため先方トップも本件を速やかに解決したいという思惑があるようですそのため迅速な和解のために多少の条件緩和を引き出せる余地も残っているかもしれませんいずれにせよとんでもねえ金が必要になるかその覚悟は必要ですそしてそれでも懲罰的賠償金よりははるかに安いかとありがとう先生また進展があったら連絡してください先生は高級鳥だからよた話もできねえ<笑>サンキューサンキューグッバイルドフ hung up the phone it seemed the executive sitting in the reception seats could guess what had been said 聞こえたか野郎どもまあ総じるとだ金さえ積みや堪忍してやるぜってわけだ。And that's why he needs a lot of money right now. <笑>あとは金の高だけを争点にすりゃいい。しかし社長、渡辺氏の示した和解金の想定額はあまりにも膨大です。それだけの余裕はありません。こんなことになるってわかってたら、高くかなんて始めんじゃなかったぜ。3年しのげれば、資金的危機は脱出できる計算でした。まさかここで刺されるなんて本当についてないホップステップジャンプのステップでこけちまったんだもんな泣けるぜメインバンクから金を引っ張るしかありません銀行はまずいな連中は勝ち馬にしか金を出さん景気は上向いてるが銀行に弱みは見せられねえ社長母外に資金はありますか我々の把握していない資金ですよせやい俺がそういう男に見えるかよ俺の財布の中身は全てお前らにさらしてるぜそこにある帳簿が我が社の全てだなら金策が必要です数百万ドル単位を引っ張れるスポンサーが大至急必要です社長社長の交友関係でなんとかなりませんでしょうか社長社長ああ,ああ落ち着けてめえら金策は俺がなんとかするお前らはガタガタせずに業務を維持しろ金さえ積めば向こうは許すと言ってるんだすでに俺たちはアジアに太いパイプを持ってるいろいろ響くだろうが取引は維持できる要は金さえ積めりゃ全て解決できる問題なんだ見てろ俺が全て解決するお前らを路頭に迷わせなんかしねえぞ大船に乗った気でいろい無事に解決したらお前ら全員をシャンパンタワーでねぎらってやるぜ約束するだから黙って俺についてこいいいな The airplane suddenly shook probably because of turbulence 
That shaking roused Rudolph from his sleep. So I like this. I like that we're kind of getting the uh, details of, so there was Hideyoshi, something happened with his company. Uh, Rudolph, we knew it was involved with um, with a lawsuit. And Rosa, um, she lent money to someone and it didn't end up working out. She's the one I'm interested in. Like, who's this person she lent money to? He had woken up early that morning and had ended off drifting, uh, drifting off to sleep while resting in his seat. I can't remember if at this point if he's told Kyrie about what's going on or if he revealed that um, at the meeting. So, when he looked outside the window, he saw that the airplane was already starting to drop in altitude considerably. The fishing boats, which had only looked like black grains until a short while ago, had become clearly visible. とっとと<笑> Nanja looked at Kinzo's face, sighing. Kinzo's eyes remained rooted to those strange magic books. Nanjo shook his head slightly. To him, children and grandchildren were to be adored, and he believed that their growth was the only enjoyment for old men. He found Kinzo's words to be a very sad thing. You understand Kinzo's point of view, like, they are there just to talk about, like, it's like you said, sucking his bones dry. He's not even dead yet, and they're already talking about the inheritance. I, I'd be a little upset, too, if my kids grew up to just, like, look at me as just, like, money, you know? I do hope there will be one episode where Kinzo shows up at the dinner, and he actually makes an appearance. Kinzo raised his face, and in the direction of his gaze was the portrait of the witch, respectfully displayed on the wall. <sighs> Inside Kinzo's head, there was no conception of today being the day of the family conference, the day when all his dear family would gather together. There was only the face of the witch in the oil painting, who never smiled outside her portrait. Everybody knew that when Kinzo talked about Beatrice, unnecessarily cutting in would instigate his wrath. Nanjo had already heard this countless times. You could call it Kinzo's favorite phrase, not Beatrice. That's his favorite phrase. His second favorite phrase. <laughs> it seemed that Kinzo believed in magic and miracles arising through betting his own fate with a certain kind of risky probability and beating the odds. <笑>これは見物ですな。うん。なるほど。研究を尽くした秘術の儀式も魔法に託るお前にかかれば爆地呼ばわりか。<笑> 
まあいい奇跡を信じる私が勝てばお前の目には水鏡にしか見えなかったであろう我が研究のすべてがこの日に結実したことをはっきりと理解できるだろうお前が勝てば見たままの通りいつ迎えが来てもおかしくない年寄りの水鏡に終わるだけだうん一体どんなギャンブルを始めるやらあなたの友人としてその賭けにいや儀式でしたか So he, Najo seems to not know what this is about but the servants seem to know when they talk about like a very special guest is coming today、um, so they seem to know what Kinzo is going to do but Najo maybe he's,、uh, maybe he's just pretending he doesn't know but he doesn't seem to know what the ritual is その儀式にあなたが勝てるよ心からお祈りするだけです。I would assume Kinzo would have told Nanjo about it because he wants everybody to participate because the more people participating,、uh, the higher chance he has of winning. うん、うん、感謝する。そういえば、Kinzo さん、今年の親族会議には懐かしい客がおられるそうですな。何 Kinzo reacted in an unusual way to Nanjo's words and turned around. Okay, so Nanjo knows about the special guest. Oh. Wait, was that who the. That's who the servants were talking about? I would assume they were talking about Beatrice. Upon hearing Battler's name, he showed an ill humored expression as though he had been let down and turned his back to Nanjo again. Kinzo san ni tote no rok nen nado. Kono hea de kenkyu ni botto s r e b a a t o y u m a no koto de shou kara na. Maybe there's more to Battler than just him, you know. Uh, just being someone who hasn't shown up in a while, maybe he's key to this whole thing working because Beatrice seemed to take a, quite an interest in him specifically. ノワールか。今宵、ルーレットがどんな奇跡を見せてくれるのか楽しませてもらおうではないか。配当は大きいぞ。そして、負ける気はせぬ。ベアトリーチェよ。我が賭けを受けるがいい。Just then, the telephone on the table rang. The piercing noise seemed to displease Kinzo, and he picked up the receiver in order, pre- in order to preserve the silence as much as he could. Kinzo hung up the phone rudely. Watching him, Nanjo sighed yet again and shifted his attention outside the window. As he was now, Kinzo would probably show no interest in any kind of guest. Was there any guest who could make Kinzo agree to come out when he should? Well, we know, we know who, but he had one person in mind, but that guest was one who could not possibly appear. After a glance at the witch at the portrait and her candid expression, which he could not place as happy or sad, Nanjo gazed up at the leaden sky. Oh, we're back in. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting this. We are back in the tea room. Now then, are all the pieces lined up? Let us start a new game with all the pieces lined up once more. We're gonna see. Oh, wait, what? Battler? What the? I was expecting it to be、uh, Burncastle. What? 
The witch looked at him in challenge while elegantly smoking her pipe. And Badler? He just slovenly shrugged his shoulders as though she wasn't worth his time. Is this from, like, the first episode after everybody she killed everybody off? Maybe she's making him watch? I am so confused right now. It's like she's making him watch from Purgatory and watching again. Like, watching the new loop and be like, well, let's see what happens this time. I- what? <laughs> this just threw me for a loop right now. He wouldn't look her in the eyes, but that didn't mean he wasn't going to play. It signified his plain determination to never be taken in by the artifices of this being he faced. It was an expression of his powerful determination to fight. I'm- this is kind of- wait, this is kind of almost like Rika and Hanyu where it's like a loop and you have to figure out what you did wrong last time and you have to solve the mystery and figure out the rules and figure out how to get out of this loop and get your happy ending. お前の出方がわからねえ以上先に先手を取ればいいじゃねえかもちろんそうさせていただくぞお前の守りをいかに崩すかなんてで詰めるかわらわの腕の見せどころよ<笑> <もちろんそうさせていただくぞ。笑> I'm, so, I'm, I'm kind of on Badler's side where it's like, I, I'm still, like, I, I, t I talk about Beitariche as a person, I know, but I'm still not fully convinced that this is all because of her, but I just love how stubborn he is. He's literally, like, in purgatory, talking to her and being like, I don't believe in you, though. <laughs> このゲームはお前に勝てないように<笑> Beatrice <laughs> may have magic, but Badler is just his secret power is just being bull headed and stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she talking My about Burned way. Castle. <laughs> and then there's the other one, uh, Lambda Delta, I think that's her name, the other witch who hasn't made an appearance yet. So, <laughs>同じ手で忍びきれると思うでないぞ。ベアトリーチェ、一つだけ最初に言っておくことがある。なんだ。お前が何を Alright, right, Phoenix, right. <laughs> Let's do it. それまで繰り返されるこうもんなのさ。面白いかな。その例えやよし。互いを再波は拷問とは実に面白い。<laughs> さて、始めようではないか。後ろ宮バトラー。
Alright guys, I am sorry. I know this was uh, a very short episode compared to what I usually do, but I am locking for time this week, uh, and also I just felt like that was a good place to stop the episode, so I hope you'll forgive me. I will definitely be making next week's episode longer, I promise. But uh, it seems like now this is what I've been waiting for. We have the family is back at the family conference and that very interesting thing right at the end uh, with Battler seemingly like in the tea room. I'm assuming maybe from like, you know, after failing from the first episode and now he's stuck there and he has to watch himself and try and win this game against Beatrice. And that's got me all sorts of confused. But uh, as always, I you know like now things are going to start to get real. Um, I'm just waiting, like, when are the murders going to happen? Are they going to happen a little bit quicker now that we kind of, like, have laid down the groundwork for what this game is all about? So that's what I'm excited to see. Like, who's going to die first? How? What's going to happen this time? We'll have to wait and see. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye! Special shoutouts to my top-tier patrons. Nana, Sparky, Icognito, Mad Goldsmith, Derek Nickel, Harry Gaziff, and Asborn Kennedy.